I'm not going to do anything with exercise today, but I am going to ask you a few questions. One, how many are teachers here? Just raise your hand. Great. How many are artists here? How many are both? How many are in that category called other? Okay, great. Let's hear it for other. I always thought that art and work were something very, very separate. Uh, I've been a teacher for a very, very long time. But I always thought of my life on this side and my art on the other side. And I want to tell you, I'm not an artist. This took me about an hour to do. <laughs> it's a self-portrait. Uh, actually, it's a self-portrait with a baseball cap. <laughs> so I'm really not an artist. I have very, very little talent as an artist. Most of my life, I've been a consultant uh, with a small c, and I've been a teacher. I've been helping people answer questions like, how can I be more creative? How can I be a better leader? Uh, been teaching courses in university about leadership, creativity, about change. And also, the most important thing is motivation. And if you've been a teacher, you know about motivation. You know about motivation of your classes. But one of the things that I learned about motivation is the hardest person to motivate is yourself. It's really the truth. I mean, as much as I used to teach about motivation, I realized that the hardest person to motivate was myself. And after so many years of teaching and working with uh, companies, I realized I really needed a change. I needed to get my mojo back. I needed to get my energy back. I needed to do something very, very different. But I didn't want to quit. I really loved the job. But I didn't really know what to do. So it's kind of like this. I was at, like some people may have been in their life too, I was at a crossroads in my life, trying to figure out what it is that I really wanted to do with my life. I wasn't 10, I wasn't 20, I wasn't 30, I wasn't 40. Sorry, I was 50. <laughs> But I really, after so many years of teaching and giving my whole life to uh, my profession, I really thought maybe I got to do something else. But I wasn't ready to quit. So what I did is what I recommend to a lot of people. I took a trip. <laughs> you know, I look a little bit different then. I took a trip to Laos, Vietnam, Cambodia, Thailand. And everywhere I went, I noticed I didn't really hang out with business people. I didn't talk to other professors. Everywhere I went, the people that I talked to were artists. And I had really not thought about this at all for a long time, even though as a young child I loved art. I would really put art as something very, very separate from what I was doing with my life. But I noticed everywhere I went, I saw artists, and they looked so happy. They had beautiful smiles on their faces. I hope no one here is from my university. <laughs> but these people looked really happy, happier than the people I worked with, okay? <laughs> even happier than the people I was consulting to. These people looked like they had it made. And they weren't making a lot of money, but they were doing something that they really loved. So I did something a little bit crazy after a month of traveling all around Southeast Asia. I came home and I said to my partner, Hitoshi, we're gonna open an art gallery. And he said, what? I said, Hitoshi, we're gonna open up an art gallery. And he said, yeah, we are, let's do it, and we did. We opened up an art gallery. It's, thank you so much. Thank you so much. It really, took, it really took a lot of guts and maybe a little bit of courage and maybe stupidity too rolled in. But we opened up an art gallery. And the amazing thing happened. I didn't quit my teaching job. I didn't stop my consulting. But what I noticed is my teaching got so much better. I was doing something I loved. And then also that transferred to something else that I loved, which was teaching. Sounds familiar, right? You do something that you love, and it just gives you so much energy, energy that you can share with a lot of other people. So after I started this gallery, my students really changed, too. This is a class. No, this isn't a class. This is, a, this is us going out to drinks one night. <laughs> Classes were like this sometimes, too. But when... My students got much more creative. Some of the students are here in the audience today. Some became actors, some became designers. They were business majors or economics majors, but they really went on to do something else. And teaching became so much more fun for me. Now, often when I say to people I own an art gallery and I'm a consultant, they say to me, what? Well, you must know a lot about creativity. 
And I say, that's not even a small part of it. Because people think that artists can teach us about creativity, and I want to tell you, artists can teach us about life. Artists know how to live. Look at this guy. This isn't me 20 years ago, okay? Or 30 or 40 years ago. You know, artists are happy. But artists can teach us about living. And when I say artists can teach us about living, artists can teach us about something else besides creativity, and that's courage. It takes courage even to be an artist. Look, when I was a kid, I told my father I wanted to be a businessman. He said, oh, that's great. Maybe when you were a kid, you told your parents, I want to be a teacher, and they said, that's great. I want to be a dentist. They said, oh, that's not so great. No, no, they said, that's great, too. <laughs> but if you tell your family you want to be an artist, what do they say? They don't say, whoopee. They say, how are you going to earn a living? Okay? Or are you sure you don't want to do something else? To, to be an artist, it takes a lot of courage, and you really got to go on and ignore a lot of what other people say. You also need a lot of uh, gum on. You need a lot of patience. These are, I'm not advertising these and selling these tonight, okay? But these took two years to make. 6,000 different glazes were tested by the artist before he came out with these glazes. That took a tremendous amount of patience. And there's so much talk today about Kizuna, you know, about community. Artists are a community. How many people are sitting next to people that they know from their school? How many people are sitting next to people that they don't know? Artists really reach out to people. Artists really try to create a community. Artists don't have competition in the brain like many of us do. Artists really think about collaboration. Now, I think uh, there's finally some people sitting in this front seat. But artists know about changing. Artists know about movement. Artists know about doing something different. Artists know where things happen. You know, everybody's got their comfort zone. I've got it myself. But everything happens outside your comfort zone. I taught in a university for 20 years. I won't say I changed every year, but I will tell you that after I started working with artists, after every class, I ripped up the lesson plan for that class and I threw it away because I wanted to come into my class very, very fresh. And I also noticed that the classes that I was teaching and I prepared for three hours didn't go as well as the classes that I prepared when I was just starting out on the subway and said, sugar, what am I going to teach today? <laughs> Those were the classes that really came from my heart. Those were the classes that really meant something to me and meant something to the students as well. Now, you can see I'm a man who really loves art, and I'm a man who really loves artists. And I also learned a lot from artists, and one thing else I wanted to say about it is artists have very thick skin. People come into my gallery, not people like you, of course, and they say to me things like, oh, did a two-year-old do that? <laughs> oh, I could do that. And if you're an artist standing there, you need a very, very thick skin not to let something like that bother you. In fact, to be an artist, you've got to be like a Daruma. You know, push and push back. Push and push back. Artists know that there's, only, there's more than one way. Artists know that there are many different ways. And artists know stereotypes are not part of life. You know, maybe an easier shorthand of getting to know people. But when I came here, people told me Japanese people were like this, Japanese people were like this. I never met a person who was a Japanese who was like any of the things that people told me about. Everyone was different. And that's the way I try to think and try to work as a teacher, too, to think about people as being very different and not being part of the stereotype. Here's an example. What's this? It's a print. Flat, on paper, done by a Japanese artist. One of my artists says to me, Bob, I'm sick of this. Why does a print have to be two-dimensional? Why can't the print be three-dimensional? I said, okay, relax, okay? You know, don't get so upset. He says, this is my prints. I said, okay, that's great. That's a print. That's a print. Silk screen print put on a skull. He put every one of those uh, pieces of paint on by hand. It took him two years. Two years and he accomplished something. And of course, people come into my gallery and say, the guy's crazy. No, he's not crazy. He's really trying to break stereotypes and really trying to do something different. But I think the main point that I want to say to you today is this. Artists know about life and artists expect that life will be a struggle. I don't know about you, but when I was 20 years old, I thought my life would be like this. My first job was working for Time Magazine in New York. I saw that corner office. I was working in a little cubicle. 
And I said, okay, someday that office will be mine. Of course, after two years, I went and did something else. But I really thought my life was going to be like this. But artists never expect that their life is going to be like this. Artists always expect that their life is going to be a struggle. It's never going to be easy. And if you're my age, you know life isn't easy. It's not impossible. It's fun. But there are ups and downs. Artists know that life is like this. It's like this. And artists know that. They expect it. And when you know it and you expect it, you can live it because that's what life is. Life is the downs and life is the ups. Artists know about life. So I started this presentation saying that I came in with a question. And my question was, how do I motivate myself? How do I be more creative in my work? And what I realized is I'm asking the wrong questions. I'm asking absolutely the wrong questions. And I think sometimes when we don't get an answer, or we get a very, very easy answer, we're just asking the wrong questions. Artists ask the right questions. They don't ask questions like how I can be more creative. They don't ask questions like how I can motivate myself. The work motivates them. They ask questions like, what kind of life do I want to live? They ask questions like, what do I want to create? Those are the questions that are really going to make our teaching, our life, so much better. Oh, one last thing. Be great and have fun. That's what I learned from artists, too. Thanks very much.